Hello folks, StylePoint here, and today we're going to be implementing the uh, Leaky Rectified Linear Unit, aka the uh, Leaky ReLU Activation Function. We're going to be implementing it in Python using PyTorch. But before we're going to jump into the uh, implementation, let us first discuss what is Leaky ReLU, uh, how it compares to the uh, uh, ReLU Activation Function, and uh, maybe what are some of its advantages over the uh, ReLU Activation Function. Okay, so Leaky ReLU, as the name suggests, it's very similar to the... Uh, ReLU activation function. Uh, that's why it has ReLU in its name. But it also has leaky in its name. The reason it is leaky ReLU is because we allow for uh, negative inputs uh, not to be suppressed. So we allow them to be some values other than zero. Um, this is the equation for leaky ReLU. It's max of alpha times x and x. To compare this with the uh, ReLU activation function, ReLU is max of 0 and x. So every negative input is going to be suppressed. It's going to be mapped to 0. Um, in this case, we get to choose what is alpha. And so um, if alpha is non-zero, it's usually between 0 and 1. If it's 0 0.25, for instance, then we're going to get a plot that we have right here. It's actually uh, a leaky ReLU plot for alpha equals 0.25. And once again, alpha is like a parameter we get to choose. Um, so this is how it looks, uh, and we see that, of course, the plots are also different, right? In case of a ReLU, we have the negative side zero, zeroed out. In case of a leaky ReLU, we have the slope here, so it's not, it's not zeroed out. Um, the good thing about this is that a leaky ReLU is kind of more expressive than the uh, ReLU activation function. And again, it goes back to the fact that ReLU suppresses all the negative inputs, maps them to zero. In case of leaky ReLU, they don't get suppressed. So the neuron is uh, uh, allowed to express itself better, okay? Um, now, in terms of some of the benefits of leaky ReLU, they're kind of similar to what, you know, ReLU provides. Um, it's, uh, of course, the uh, activation function, and uh, that means it introduces nonlinearity. So that's super cool. Uh, it's also very fast, it might not be as fast as ReLU, because in case of ReLU, we just have we just map any negative number to zero. In this case, we map it to alpha times x, so we have this multiplication here. But in practice, it's it performs pretty much the same as ReLU. Uh, but if 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 we talk about like micro optimizations and and performance benefits uh, that are maybe very very small, ReLU would likely still outperform leaky ReLU. Um, other than that, yeah, it's a, it introduced nonlinearity, it's, it's fast, and um, it's similar to ReLU, uh, and it allows Neuron to express itself, and a bit better than ReLU. Okay, N now that we know what is leaky ReLU, uh, and how similar it is to the ReLU, uh, we're going to go ahead and um, implement it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to compute the uh, gradient for this. So the, the le leaky ReLU of x is max of alpha times x and x. So the function itself, um, what that means uh, for a function, right? If we write like a function rules, if we translate that into, into like the rules here, that means if x is uh, um, less than uh, zero, we map it to the, uh, um, we map it to a alpha times x. Why is that the case? Well, because alpha is usually between zero and one. And alpha times x is always going to be greater than x in this case, right? If, it's, if x is minus 2, minus 2 times number between 0 and 1 is always going to be greater than minus 2 itself because uh, that's the way negative numbers work, right? The negative number with the higher absolute value is going to be smaller than the negative number with the lower absolute value. So if x is less than 0, we're going to say that maps to alpha times x. On the other hand, if x is greater than or equal to 0, we're going to map that to x. What does that mean for the gradient, though? Well, for the gradient, we still have to write these rules. If x is less than 0, that's going to be alpha. And if it's greater than or equal to 0, that's going to be 1. Now, technically, leaky ReLU does not really have a, a derivative at x equals 0. The reason for that is because the left and right derivatives, they're not the same at x equals 0. But by convention, we're going to say that it's alpha. It's just a convention. Um, and the reason we might want to do that is because maybe we want to have like uh, smaller values for, uh, for gradients. Okay, now that we know how to, and let's call this gradient, sorry. Now that we know how to uh, implement the function, as well as implement the gradient, let's go ahead and do it. 
Okay, so the API for this function, we have the forward method and a backward method. Uh, for the forward method, we just return torch.where, it's a ternary if operation with broadcasting, uh, where data is less than 0.0, so that's zero, and we have to use like doubles here because uh, we're dealing with floats and torch. If we use integers and longs and those kinds of data types, Torch will complain that it does not know how to deal with integers and floats. To you know, it cannot multiply those things, cannot do operations uh, with those. So we need to have like the same types. In this case, zero point zero automatically defaults to double. Um, so if it's less than zero, we're going to say alpha times uh, data, and otherwise we get the data. Now for the backward method, we still need the uh, um, data and we also need alpha but we need to store alpha as a tensor otherwise we won't be able to use this save for backwards so save for backwards can only store torch variables like a tensor it cannot store like python variables like float so we need to do this okay now that we've done that we're pretty much good here so we saved data and alpha uh in the forward method so that we can then reuse them in the backward method. In a backward method, we can unpack the context uh, saved tensors, and then we can compute the gradient. In this case, the gradient would be um, if x is less than or equal zero. So we can use torch where if data is less than uh, equal zero, we're going to say that's alpha. Otherwise, it's one. And then we're just going to say grad output times grad. We just do the chain rule. Okay. Now, um, we're going to run this, but what we're going to run is the uh, testing code here, which does the grad check. And again, grad check, that is, uh, that's the uh, utility function provided by, by PyTorch here. It's an operation that allows us to compare our uh, gradient approximations to the numerical approximations. And if they're close enough, uh, we're going to say that the grad check was successful. Otherwise, it was unsuccessful and we might have some problems but let's run this and hope that uh we don't have any problems we don't so it's scratch check successful that's super cool okay now i want to also show the uh alternative implementation for, for the uh, leaky ReLU. uh and here it is so the uh, alternative implementation would actually be kind of simpler we don't need to write backward method uh, manually the reason for that is because in a forward method, we only use torch.where, which is a built-in PyTorch operation for which PyTorch knows how to compute gradients. And so it, uh, it, does, uh, it does it using, uh, using the uh, autograd engine that it has built in. And what we do is that we define class leaky ReLU. We inherit from nn.module that we import right here. So we import torch.nn as nn. We perform inheritance here. And then we just define the forward method, right? We say if torch.where... We basically copy this. We can see that this is the same, exactly the same. So we copy uh, copy this over, and oops, and that's what we do. We just define the forward method, and a backward method is automatically derived for us, right? So that's super cool. We do need to change the way we declare ReLU here, or define ReLU. But if we run this, we're gonna still get grad check successful. So that's pretty much the implementation of the uh, leaky ReLU. Kind of similar to how ReLU is implemented, except for we, we give it uh, um, a bit more flexibility with this alpha, right? We can we can customize uh, uh, ReLU based on that alpha. And if alpha is zero, uh, in case of leaky ReLU, if alpha is zero, then we pretty much get ReLU. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in, and I'm going to see you next time.